One of my students asked me a really interesting question about how food webs start. Before we had predators, when we go back in time, there were only bacteria, archaea, microscopic eukaryotes, and of course viruses. When all the organisms were very small, there weren't these elaborate food webs that we have today. Instead, the bacteria and other organisms are just exchanging organic matter. The image that we're looking at here is from Lake Joyce in Antarctica, where glaciation has excluded most of the large organisms. Uh, there are a few little uh, protists, there's some rotifers and nematodes, but this is an example of a modern ecosystem where we just have this microbial loop of resources going among those organisms. And so in this video, I want to talk a little bit about how those nutrients are exchanged and how when animals and predators first evolved, we might have gotten the first food web the way we conceive of it today. So if we think about the microbial food loop, we start with primary productivity. And this is the process that uh, organisms use to take inorganic carbon, like carbon dioxide, and turn it into organic matter. And so this produces uh, the organics that uh, cells are made up of. And this is, of course, a photosynthesis. Uh, and photosynthesis creates the most organics on Earth today. Um, we also have bacteria that can perform chemosynthesis. And these bacteria use chemical energy to convert inorganic carbon into or organics. So from this, we end up with uh, basically cells that consist of uh, particulate organic matter. So we have cells here. These cells can um, burst open. Um, when they die. So if, for example, they don't have enough energy to keep their cell walls covered, they can um, break open. And if the cells break open, they release a lot of their components. Um, some of it might be uh, particulate organic carbon and some of it is dissolved organic carbon. So we have uh, particulate organic carbon and dissolved organic carbon. Okay. So these are two pools of resources that other uh, organisms can use. So these are these cells are the primary product um, productivity cells, but we can also have um, fermenting and respiring. And these organisms take the dissolved organic carbon and uh, sometimes they're um, particulate organic carbon and use those materials to make um, the cells themselves. Then, of course, we have viruses. And viruses infect cells. They can infect the ones, the primary product, cells, so for example the cyanobacteria or the very common photosynthetic cells and their viruses that infect those. And they can also infect these fermenting and respiring cells and they can either just live within the cells and reproduce within them or they can cause the cells to break open or lies to again create more particulate organic matter and dissolved organic matter. All right, so, so one of the processes is the cell's sort of, I'll call it, quote unquote, natural death, uh, which produce these resources. Um, and then the other is caused by uh, viruses. So there are also some cases where some cells can sort of ingest other cells. So it's, it's also the case where maybe you have a, a small cell and a larger cell. 
and the smaller cell gets engulfed into the larger one and um, then becomes, becomes part of it. Right, so this basically gets pulled in and then um, it starts to break down. So there's some um, engulfment. Which and I can add that there are also uh, organic molecules that can connect between the cells. And um, this is one way that smaller cells can get energy from the larger ones. They basically suck the components out of the larger cells. So that's a, like a, a parasite um, sort of uh, reaction. So, so there are some uh, exchanges of materials um, among living cells um, that end up killing them. But this is the, basically the status of quote unquote the food web uh, before the first um, uh, predators actually uh, evolved. So if we think about what happened um, when we got the first predators, we have all these cells. This is at a larger scale. So this represents our, our photosynthetic primary productivity cells here. And then sitting within them, there were plenty of fermenting and respiring cells, and particularly uh, lower down in the mat. where there's not enough light for the photosynthetic ones. We just have the respiration. Eventually, the first uh, grazers evolved. Like so we'll draw a larger one. They were probably smaller than this at first. And um, they had a mouth part. The ones I'm drawing anywhere are and then a gut, these organisms could graze along the mat eating them. And one of the things that, that could have happened is that maybe there was a smaller version here and the larger one actually uh, managed to ingest the smaller one and then maybe that starts being your first uh, set of predation. So if we draw a food web here, we still have our primary producers. We still have our fermenters and our heterotrophs. We still have our organic carbon dissolved in particulate that's going between them uh, with the viruses. Then we start having our grazers. And the grazers can eat primary producers and the heterotrophs and fermenters. And once you have the grazers, then it becomes possible to have the first, what I'll call omnivores. And these can eat the grazers. They probably first started off as grazers themselves with the primary productivity and the heterotrophs and they started ingesting the grazers. And then from there, these, these could maybe specialize to become predators. And the grazers could specialize to become omnivores. So if we go back to another view of Lake Vanda, in um, some places you might have had these elaborate microbial mats. And as soon as the grazers evolved, they would eat off all of these uh, pinnacles formed by the primary producers. And then eventually those grazers would, would um, be consumed themselves. And so we have this really interesting building up of uh, complex food webs uh, from something that was really very simple that lasted for billions of years on Earth and until what we call Ediacaran time when we have what we know are the first grazers and also the first uh, predators. Um, and from there we get the shelled organisms in response to 
the evolutionary pressures for protection from predators, and the ecosystems keep building up to be uh, more and more complicated um, to what we see today. So thanks for watching.